Hi, I'm Dr. Kathleen Hallinan, and we're continuing our vlog on weight loss. So there was a lot of interest on phentermine, and so we're going to go a little bit more in depth into the medication end of things. And I'm going to throw in a few extra things about rules, because we've talked in the past, I've mentioned rules, and these are things that you really should stick to pretty much with, and then make a few exceptions once in a while. So I just want to show you this. Somebody mentioned I should have some more video or visual effects. This is a model of five pounds of fat, just so you get an idea. Um, and this belongs to one of the other physicians, and I borrowed it from him, So, and I haven't forgotten that I borrowed it. So, um, but, uh, so this is five pounds of fat, right? That's a lot. And when people don't think about it, when they're 20 pounds overweight, that's four of these that you're carrying around. And you know, that gets heavy and it weighs on your knees and on your back. And it's always perplexing for me when people come in and they don't understand why their back hurts and why their knees hurt and things when they're 20 pounds overweight. But when you look at this and you realize if you're 20 pounds overweight, you've got four of these that you're carrying around all day long. That takes a lot of toll on the mechanics. And for each pound you lose, very important, you take off, multiply it by three to get how many pounds per square inch you offload your knees. That's tremendous. So if you lose 10 pounds, you take off 30 pounds per square inch of force um, across your knee joints. Very important. And knee uh, problems and hip problems and low back problems are such a huge part of obesity. It's something that people really don't even think about. So very important with your kids. Protect them from this. Protect them from having to deal with this later on in life. So five pounds of fat, okay? So now we're going to go into, I got my board again. We did some col colors today because I wanted to do color. So phentermine, everybody was quite interested in phentermine, I could see. And so we're going to go a little bit more in depth into phentermine. Phentermine is pretty inexpensive. It's been around for quite a long time. It comes in three doses, 15 milligrams, 30 milligrams, and 37.5 milligrams, just because that was the initial dose that was used in the Fen-Fen combination, which we talked about last time. So there are some things you need to know about phentermine. Um, it's not expensive, even out of pocket. It's really relatively cheap. Um, and so it's FDA approved for three months at a time. You can use it for more than three months. Uh, that's considered off-label use, and it should be used uh, if, it, if you go off-label. It should be done under the discussion and uh, with your provider or physician uh, so that you're fully aware of risks and benefits. There are some contraindications to using phentermine. Phentermine is a stimulant and it's a controlled substance. It's in a class of drugs called amphetamines. I will tell you, however, this is not addicting. When people run out of their phentermine, they're not beating down my door saying, I need my phentermine and you've got to prescribe it for me right now. They like, they run out and like a week later you hear from them, hey, I forgot my phentermine. So um, this is not addicting, trust me. Um, it's very well tolerated. You have to check heart rate and blood pressure because it is a stimulant. And in the brain, what it does is it increases the release of neurotransmitters. So those are the chemicals that talk between neurons, which are the cells in your brain. And so these cells in your brain talk to one another and through the space, the synapse, chemicals get released and that's how they communicate. And so phentermine helps release chemicals called norepinephrine and serotonin and dopamine. And these are neurotransmitters that tend to promote satiety. So that's the word for feeling full. So they kind of it takes away the feeling of being hungry. In the rest of your body, it actually also increases norepinephrine and epinephrine. Those are the things that you would consider uh, adrenaline. And adrenaline, or norepinephrine and epinephrine, increase the breakdown of fat. So it, by two mechanisms, it decreases the amount of time or the feeling that people have that they're hungry, and it also increases the breakdown of fat for energy. So. Very important, you still have to stick with diet and exercise. I can't even tell you, I have had people that think that they just have to pill, take the pill and they can keep eating junk, but that's not how it works. So you can overeat the phentermine. I would still advise you to stick with a good, healthy, low calorie, low carbohydrate diet and a good regular exercise regimen. And the contraindications, there are some contraindications. So 
uncontrolled hypertension, meaning uncontrolled high blood pressure, those people cannot start on fentermine. However, I have quite a few people who have high blood pressure. I get them controlled. Once your blood pressure is under control, then you can start the fentermine with very close monitoring to make sure that it doesn't shoot it up. Um, I always check thyroid functions and electrolytes and kidney function prior to starting fentermine. Um, and thyroid issues. You can't take fentermine if you have hyperthyroidism, but I do have people who have hypothyroidism or on thyroid hormone. Their lab work is normal. You check the lab work, and as long as they are in what's called a euthyroid, meaning a normal thyroid state, you can use fentermine with those people. So the people who really absolutely cannot use fentermine are people with heart disease, arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, um, seizure disorders. Those are people who, unfortunately, that's not an option for them. But for everyone else with all of these other issues, you can control the blood pressure because so many times high blood pressure goes along with being overweight. If you control the blood pressure with medication, then fentermine becomes an option for you. Um, I'll go into more in depth next time. So topiramate is a seizure medication. And when combined with fentramine, it is a drug called Qsimia, also FDA approved for weight loss. Topiramate is a seizure drug. Um, it works on sodium and calcium channels. It has a lot more side effects than fentramine does. So while it is an option, I strongly advise you to start with the fentramine first. And if you really need to, then you can kind of either consider going over to Qsimia or depending on what your insurance uh, covers, you know, you can kind of uh, use topiramate by itself off-label, but it has a tremendous amount of potential side effects that get higher as the dose goes up. Um, again, I mentioned some rules. These are no soda and eat half. Those are two, let's just start off with two basic rules. Really, no soda, just stop it. You can have it on special occasions, but it's not like every single weekend or five days out of the week is a special occasion. Special occasions are like birthdays, you know, anniversary, Christmas, whatever. A little bit of soda. Otherwise, don't have any soda. And what I tell my kids is eat half. Only take half, especially like if it's dessert. I knew I had succeeded one day when um, one of my kids went out to the freezer. It was a hot day. Got an ice cream sandwich. I watched. He took it out, put it on the counter, cut it in half put the other half back in the freezer and I hadn't said anything and I thought aha you that's great so they they know if you can teach your kids only have half you don't need the whole thing of just about anything have half of what you're gonna have and see how that goes and if you feel full after you've had half or you're you're happy after you've had half that's good enough so no soda only eat half those are my first two on my I have a few rules and try these out because I think if you kind of start to set these rules on your daily life you'll be much more inclined to have long-term success. So sorry, this was a bit longer one than I usually do, but there was so much interest in fentramine, I figured I'd go a little bit more in depth. Okay, hope you're all doing well, um, and uh, we'll try to get a few more of these going uh, over the next couple of weeks. Thanks, bye.